What is going on, people of YouTube? Big Shy Gaming here. So today we're going to start. I guess you could consider it. Uh, I suppose we could do a series on this. One of my favorite RTS games that I've been playing for quite a long time now. Um, so as you can tell, it's Supreme Commander Forged Alliance. Now this is the expansion to the original Sur Supreme Commander, um, and this does not require the original to be played. There is also Supreme Commander 2, which I own, but I do not like nearly as well. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of do a campaign walkthrough of each of the factions here. And we'll kind of go from there. I'm just going to adjust the, the sound here because it's still a little... It's still a little loud for myself. So I'd rather you guys can hear me over that. So I'm just kind of... I'm just gonna lower that just a little bit more. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll go straight into campaign. We'll kind of load it up and then, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess we can, I mean, it's a tutorial, so it's not that big of a deal. This one, it's just, yeah, screw it. We'll just launch everything and show you guys kind of how to do things. And then if you guys want to play it, I'm um, sure you could probably pick up a copy of this for, I think it's probably, I might even be able to get a digital download of it now, because I have a physical copy of it, so I might be able to get it for, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks maybe? I, have, I honestly do not know anymore, because I don't know, I don't know what it runs for right now. So we'll just run through the tutorial quick, and I know exactly what to do, of course, but this is good for people that may not know what this Listen is, up, so... These exercises will fully train you in all operational aspects of your armored command unit, including the construction and deployment of structures and units. You need to get through this stuff as quickly as possible, because the Order and their alien buddies are kicking the crap out of us from one end of the galaxy to the other. So pay attention! Oh, well, lovely, huh? The first thing you need to learn is how to navigate the battlefield. Your ACU offers a full view of the battlefield, including the ability to zoom in and out. You use the mouse wheel, or Q and W keys, to zoom in and out. Okay, so that's, yeah, it's, it's a unique feature, Good. Supreme Commander. Now it's time to take your ACU for a stroll. Left-click the ACU to select it, and right-click on a map location to give it a move order. When you're ready, Move your ACU to the designated location on the map. Are you gonna give me my ACU? Gosh darn it. Nice and smoldering, isn't it? So yeah, like this is a very basic tutorial, so it's it's pretty easy to navigate, so Well done. Yeah, I know. I'm pro or not. Your ACU is a powerful weapon system and can easily fend off lower level enemy units. To attack an enemy, select your ACU and right click on the unit you want to destroy. Remember, your ACU will automatically attack as soon as it's within range. Okay, now we get to engage attack in battle. And destroy the enemy unit. Gonna expand the map a little bit. Yep. That's why I moved the ACU down a little because I knew I saw the little arrow there. Okay. Why don't you give me control of everything now? Darn it. Come on. Okay, so you can scroll in and out. It's the very nice thing about this kind of an RTS. You can go all the way about, get like this, get your nice map, but you can always scroll all the way in and get all the detail and all this stuff too. It only does 100 damage, huh? You can upgrade your ACU, of course, your armor command Good unit. Job, soldier, but don't get too cocky. Two resources create and maintain everything you build, mass and energy. In order to have a fully functioning economy, you must balance how you gather and spend each resource. Resource management, just like any RTS. This HUD element indicates how much energy you're gathering and spending, while this HUD element shows your intake of mass. If you spend more than you're bringing in, you'll have negative income and run the risk of stalling your economy. 
which can be very easy to do. You obtain mass by building mass extractors on mass deposits. Mass deposits are displayed on your HUD as a green box with a green X through its middle. You can also get mass with mass fabricators and by reclamation. I want you to build three mass extractors. Select your ACU, click the mass extractor icon in the build UI, and then click on one of the highlighted mass deposits. Do this for each extractor. So this is fairly simple. You have three mass deposits there, so you gotta build three mass extractors, right? Okay, so that doesn't seem too hard. So here's your build queue. You can you have a bunch of buildings. This is just a tutorial. So you'll grab this, you can do that, and then if you click shift before you click it, you can build multiples of the same building. And then if you hold shift again, it tells you the estimated ETA, so estimated time of arrival of building that particular building. ACUs and engineers are all capable of this, so I can speed it up if you guys would like, but I think it's a good experience for somebody who doesn't know what, you know, the game's been out for a long time, but if you don't know anything about the game or new to RTS, I do think this is a good game to introduce you to RTS games, because it gives you the build order of, you know, managing your resources, so you gotta manage your economy. And then it also, the amount of units you can build is, you got, you know, your unit count here, which is helpful, so, and then here's your objectives, so, and you can build a bunch of well done. control things. You're now, collecting mass. now you need power. Energy is collected through the use of power generators. There are three levels of power generators, and unlike mass extractors, they can be built anywhere on the map. Yeah, which is true. So your orders are to construct two power generators. Select your ACU, click on the power generator icon in the build UI, and then click on any open location on the ground. Unit schematics okay. down. Again, same concept, you can build it. And if you place it next to certain structures, it gives them a bonus. So you can see right here, this is how many you got queued up. So if you build a power generator next to a building it will supplement that building with power as you can see the power couplings right there so it's nice it's nice to have that because then the building gets a bonus so it doesn't take it takes power from here and then excess power gets converted to the rest of your economy so that's how much you're using that's how much you're bringing in that's what now you're that using now those generators are online you'll receive a steady stream of energy and power you probably have more surplus okay. power than Let's mass start constructing an army Factories build engineers and tactical units like tanks, bombers, and submarines. Yep. Go ahead and build a land factory. Oh, okay. So, build a land factory after that power generator. Now what I like to do is I like to put four, four tier one power generators with each um, unit production building. So we'll build that and then we can, on the back side, build four power generators. I know it takes longer, but it makes the, the factory more efficient, actually, so... It'll kind of walk us through that. I think I think they'll walk us th th through that in a tutorial, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. See, I wish I could just adjust the, the angle just a little bit, you know? But I like that, because then you can see where the water line, you know, where, like, where the beach is here, and... It'll slowly expand the, the playable area, which is nice. That's the thing I like about Forged Alliance here. Well done, Commander. They always expand now you your can start objective. An army. Now that you have a land factory, you can construct mobile land units. Left click on the factory to select it and then click on the units you want to build. For this exercise, construct two light assault bots and two light artillery. Each time you click on a unit icon, it will be added to the factory's build queue. And again, with building units out of factories, you can shift click and you can get up to five, you know, see, five of each unit. So we'll just do like this, like they want us to do. And then the rally points here, we're going to move it here just by right clicking. This keeps our ACU busy building something while the factory is working. A bonus is you could have your armor command unit, your ACU, or an engineer assist the factory in producing units to speed up unit build time and in 
uh, Forged Alliance here, as you can see in the lower left hand corner here, it says Tech 1 Land Factory. Well, each factory can be upgraded to Tech 2 and Tech 3, which produce, you know, more powerful, more powerful units at each subsequent tier, so... Can I build another one? I might be able to. Good job. Yeah, I might as well build another now one. Have the beginnings of an actual army. Control groups let you quickly select a group of units without having to use the mouse. To create a control group, drag, select, or shift click the units you created and press control plus one. Those units are now in control group one. If you press the number one key, you'll automatically select all units within the control group. See, I just did that as he was talking. Make a control group. I did. Now you're cooking. Factories also produce engineers, which are able to construct structures that are unavailable to your ACU. Yeah. Like mass and energy storage and radar and sonar installations. Engineers can also reclaim structures and units, capture enemy units, repair damaged units and structures, and assist with other construction. See, I already told them that. I just explained this to construct them. Construct two engineers from the land bank. Well, give me the option, darn it. See, now I got two factories, I can produce double the amount of units in the same amount of time. Except, you know, if I have the economy to do it, of course, as you can see, running the one mask. It's because I'm building, building units, and building buildings, so it's something that we always got to keep an eye on. That a fella. Well done. Both your ACU and engineers can capture enemy units and structures, and nothing drives those order scumbags crazier than watching you use their own gear against them. A power generator has been placed on the map. Capture it with your engineers by selecting the engineers and right-clicking on the power generator. Yeah, see, capturing enemy units and structures is very, very useful. Because if you're playing as one faction, like right now we're playing as the UEF, if you capture, like, a Aeon or a Cybern factory, then you can produce those units and those engineers, and you can produce units of all the factions. So it's always nice to keep that in mind, to have that ability to capture enemy units and structures f to your benefit, so... Is it Aeon or is it Order of Illuminate? I can't remember. It's basically the same thing. I call it the Aeon. It's essentially the same thing, so... As you can see, the bar underneath shows how the progress is, is capturing it. There we go. The power generator is now under your control. Good job. And now we'll have them reclaim mass. Never know when one of those damn aliens is going to show up, so always fortify your base with defensive structures. Point defenses offer decent protection and can fend off most land-based attacks. Build a point defense at the marked location. Yep, base defense is nice. Okay, so now we'll go in and build defense. I want to build... I like to build them in more than just one unit, so two of them right there would be very nice. Well, what are you doing? I wanted two, not just one. I think I off-clicked. I think I misclicked there, so... And again, you can see the progress bar underneath here and on the, un on the unit or structure itself. And while they're doing that, I have them reclaim that by using shift so that they can reclaim more mass as that's getting built. And you guys can come and Good. reclaim mass here. Now if you're attacked, you'll at least have a fighting chance. Yeah, but one point defense isn't gonna defend well, an attack. What do you know? Here comes some enemy units. One Good point defense, really? Defense. Well one point defense is good, but two is better, so I built two. Hopefully they're done by the time they get here. Uh, they're only scouts, so no big deal. Okay, two point defenses. Defending and they against get land based attacks is only half the battle. You also need to be able to ward off air attacks. Build an anti air tower at the designated spot. Unit schematics down. Air there, really? Okay. So what I'll do there being is it's kind of far away from the base. I'll build anti oh my goodness. Anti air. Point defense, point defense, anti-air. Nice quadrant like that. It's, it's actually a nice solid defense. Because you got your point defense and you got your anti-air defense. So, what do these guys, they did. 
Collect a bunch of mass. Collect a bunch of mass. Trees are mass. Basically anything on the map can be reclaimed as mass. Mass is, is the one resource that you need the most of usually. So that keeps them busy anyway. Prevents them from being idle. Now when, you can also upgrade your ACU to build more powerful structures at each subsequent tier two, you know, tiers two and three. You just gotta upgrade your ACU to have the engineering suite so that it can produce those, or so it can build those, so. Maybe we'll make a commander out of you yet. Yeah, 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 I Good hear job. you, Fletcher. It's kinda getting on my nerves a little bit. attacking with bombers. Now aren't you glad that you built that AA? One, one anti-air is not gonna defend against bombers, though. It'll help, but it won't... Oh, that's not a bomber. It's a fighter. So... You can have all of the tanks and bombers you want. But if you don't know what the enemy's up to, you'll be fighting with one hand tied behind your back. That's why one of the most critical parts of waging war is intelligence. Radar is a critical component in gathering intel on your enemies. Yes, it is. Build one now at the designated location. So radar and sonar are very important. Why is he having me build this so far? Jeez. Well, I can already tell by this map. This map is called Stenton. Stenton. No, this is. What the heck? I can't remember the name of this map. This is a very typical one v one map. Yeah, I can see. On the opposite side here, it's exactly the same. You got all the water. That's why I like this game. It's so dynamic. You got, you know, you got your land, your air, and your naval power that you can all build. So nice little defense quadrant there. So I like that. But as you'll notice, every time you build, it goes against your unit count. So whether it's a building or a unit, it goes against this. You got to keep an eye on your building count. I like that they have it in the corner. Oh, excuse me, had a yawn. Sorry about that. So I just get the feeling I'm gonna actually start producing a bunch more units just because I can. Uh, you, can you can start reclaiming a bunch of mass. Because we'll need mass. I always need more mass. And that makes it easier to build unit, build structures as well. There we go. Build a radar, Commander. I'm working on it. It's getting built. Hold your now you can keep tabs on the enemy. Good work. Keep your panties on, dang nabbit. Your radar has uncovered the existence of a small order base. Build up an army and destroy that base. See, told you I had to build up an army. Okay, that's not really a base, that's just like an outpost. What the heck? I suppose. It's a, is there even any defense? It's completely undefended. They got a radar, mass extractor, and a power generator. That's not really. Eh. It's not really a base. Like I said, it's an outpost. It's not worth. Eh. See, and then in this corner, you got your idle engineer, your idle ACU your factories, and then your control groups. So this, this sidebar is really useful. So we're just gonna send these units up here and destroy all that. Yeah, see, I'm just shift-clicking trying to get the mass here is all. Like I said, any, a lot of these rocks and trees can be used to collect mass, so. I think while that's going on, we'll build anti-air and then a point defense, point defense, and another anti-air. Just kind of another forward defense. So I think, if I remember right, I just, I think we get attacked, I don't know. Come on. Wipe out that enemy base, I'm commander. working on it, I got my units going there. Keep your panties in a bunch, goodness gracious just does not want to, doesn't want to do anything, does he? He's just in such a hurry, and it's like, there's not that many, not that much to destroy. There's only three structures, come on now. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm being a little, 
If you've done down. your homework, you know that most stops will take place on massive battlefields. Yeah. Transports are the See? most effective way of moving units across vast distances. Now we gotta build an air factory. So check your field manual. For the purposes of this exercise, we're only going to cover basic use. We've given you a transport. Oh, you're gonna give me a transfer? I don't get to build one? What the heck? Load a transport, select the units you wish to move, and then right click on the transport. Once the transport is full, select it, click the transport icon, and then the spot on the map where the transport should unload. Load a transport and move it to the designated location. Well, give me a transport then. Sit here and give me a transport with the biscuits. What the fudge, what the frick? Um, okay, you're gonna give me tier three units. Twip on an enemy base. Okay, I don't got a problem with that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Assault bots. Yeah, they're... Transports are very useful, I mean... Especially traveling long distances. So now we want to unload here. And they'll do that, hold shift, and send them back to this island by right-clicking. Can I build an air factory yet? No. So yeah, multitasking is a huge thing here. Now you can set your engineers, or any unit for that matter, come on, there, on patrol, and they will reclaim and repair anything in now that radius. The of transports. Good job. See, now they're going back. Picking up a larger order base to the north. We're sending you reinforcements. Okay. Add them to your attack force and erase that enemy base. I want Let's nothing left. Stand. Send this in here. Send in these tier one units. See what happens. And send me more units on that island over there. Okay, we'll just go over there and transport them over. Or are they transporting them over for us? Oh, it looks like he is transporting them for us. That'll be nice, because then. We don't have to create the units at all, and then we just use those units and send them in. So, very basic tutorial, which is, it's very helpful for new players. I didn't build that radar system, I, was, I didn't build these power generators either. Okay, I guess we'll just kind of set them there. Oh. Oh. Sent in a commander. Sent in an enemy commander. Destroy the enemy commander. That's not going to be easy, sir. What are you doing? You get over here. So now we can bring these heavy bots in. Yeah, these are like I said, these are tier three, so they're very devastating against all these units right now. See, with all these shieldings, they. Yeah, it's not going to be that hard of an assault. These are all just walls. It's pretty obvious that it's walls. And now we can watch and it'll be a massive explosion! Boom! Just like a nuke. Just like a nuke! Gotta love it. Man, those explosions are just awesome. Yay, we completed it! Okay, so now we're gonna go into the campaign. And we'll do the actual first mission. That one. Okay, here we go. I don't know how the hell this happened, but those bastards found us. They've made planet fall, and are attacking Fort Clark and the outlying civilian centers. This is the end of the road for us, Commander. Fort Clark is our last base of operations, and all of our evacuation routes have been severed. If we falter today, the Seraphim and their lackeys will have free reign to butcher every last human in the galaxy. We have no other choice but to dig in and hold the line. General Fletcher is already on planet and leading the defense of Fort Clark. We want to open up a second front, which is why you're gating in south of his position. This is oh your boy, LZ. Fletcher. There the guy that was just on training that location. gives all kinds of commands and say, why don't you do this, why don't you do that yet? Fort Clark. You will destroy all order structures and then push inland. Continue north until you link up with Fletcher. Once the siege on Fort Clark has been lifted, the two of you will directly assault and destroy the Seraphim Commander. Failure is not an option, Commander. Now the Seraphim is the alien enemy. They invaded the planet and now we're, the three factions are sort of working together, sort of not, so kind of just creating a civil war, so to speak, so... 
Come on. Okay. Look at all the bases. Look at the bases. Looks like this is one of the two enemy bases in the area. Blow them both back to the Stone Age and then sync up with Fletcher. There's a line of enemy artillery protecting the bases. They are targets of opportunity. But if you destroy them, it'll make your life a hell of a lot easier. Once you deal with the primary base, well, they... Ah, hell. Enemy gunships are inbound. It's time to get you down there while we still can. Okay, so now this mission is the mission where you decide which faction you get to choose to play. You get to choose one of the three factions. I mean, as we started with the UEF, we'll just do the UEF. Now this mission is the exact same regardless which faction you choose. And then after you get done with this operation, then the each faction is a little different. A little too close for comfort. Get it done, Commander. Okay, so we're gonna be building. You just gated into a hell of a we're gonna build all these right land factories, and I think you get a bonus if you build where a destroyed item was. Apparently not. I thought you did. I swear, I thought you were able to build on top. Yeah, see, it's already pre-built, so... Or half-built, anyway. And we already got Tier 3 receivables, so... Yeah. Right here? Yep. So I don't know if I'm going to complete this entire mission with you guys. Maybe we'll just destroy this base and then we'll end this video here, because this... This first mission can actually be quite long. I don't want this video going too terribly long for you guys. It's kind of an intro mission. Showing you guys kind of what Supreme Commander Forge Alliance is all about. Like I said, it's... I wouldn't say I grew up with this game, but once I found this game, it's... ...schematic to your ACU. It's a siege assault bot that has been modified so it can cross water. HQ out. It's one of my more favorite RTS games. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt him as he was talking. To me, I just I love the fact that you can scroll all the way out like this, but then you can go all the way in and just look at all the details on this stuff too. So using a mouse wheel is very, very useful to say the least. Okay, so we'll have him build those land factories, then we'll build these air factories. Oh come on, are you gonna like so, like so, like so, like so? And as you can see, everything is damaged in this base. So, I think what we're going to do is build engineers first. Tier 1 engineers. And then you can upgrade these, as you can see. See, you can upgrade to Tier 2 and get better units. So, we'll get these engineers out. We'll repair all these buildings. And repair building. And repair all these other buildings as well. all these buildings that will definitely help. Now if you have the plus and minus key, uh, signs on your keyboard, on, if you have like a numerical pad, you can actually speed it up. See? Speed up to one. Speed up to two. Speed up to three. It, it's very nice to speed up certain moments, but I think we'll just do plus one. Maybe we'll do plus two. Just to kind of move this along just a little faster. Tier 1 trying to repair a tier 3, it, it'll take some time. And, like, engineers can build more than your ACU. Excellent. The shield is fully repaired and operating at full capacity. So, HQ same thing out. here, we'll build a bunch of those. We want to get rid of... want to get rid of some of these... Um, other things. So, I'm going to make these Enemy engineers the channel north of your LZ commander. Destroy them. and make them HQ so that they can actually help build all these uh, units that will come out of here. See how we got power generator there. Power generator there. Commander, it is imperative that you move inland as quickly as possible. Count those lines hang in the balance. Pair. Okay, and then I'm gonna upgrade all these all at once. Because I know I got the resources to do it. Along with all these. See I'm still positive on all those. 
so that's a good thing. The defenses that we have right now should hold for now. But it's nice to come and repair a lot of these buildings. Yeah, you can see all this will get taken out if I don't get a shield up here soon. Um, the nice thing about this is that you just gotta upgrade to tiers. Crap, spilled something. Hold on just a moment here. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this spill I just made. Son of a gun. Some of this, this should help. Spilled some of my drink, dog, on it. Oh, dang, that sucks. Spilled some of my drink, oh no, it's not a good thing. It's never a good thing to spill your drink. And no, it's not an alcoholic drink, I don't drink liquor, so. Don't nobody get no ideas there, I got it. Okay, that's taken care of. That's taken care of for now, that, so. Move that so I don't spill it again, gosh darn it. Okay, where was, let's see here, where was I at? Okay, I must have went off screen for just a moment there. Okay, so, I got tier two yet? Oh, not yet. So yeah, I mean, being as I can't upgrade my commander just yet, I'm just gonna have him repair a bunch of stuff. Because I don't have I think the best thing to do right now is to get to tier 3 as fast as possible. Where are these? How are these engineers doing? Okay, they are there. So, um, I can have them actually come over here. Oh, and see, this stuff's getting attacked. And build some, at least some basic, uh, Anti-air, I mean, I know I have all this, but let's see here, what else would we want them to build? Uh, mass storage and what? Mass storage, there we go. Mass storage, mass storage, mass storage. Having mass storage definitely helps. Keeps all your mass stored, just as the name implies. So... Build T2 engineers. And as soon as I can get, well, I'll have some tier 2 now so I can get these up. And I'll help take care of all this. These engineers outside this range to help them build all that. Same thing. Because, like I said, I do want to get to tier 3 as fast as possible. I think I'm going to upgrade the land factories to tier 3 first. And I think I'm going to make a bunch of fighter bombers. Okay, so now we got some anti-air. I mean, it's only T1. That tier 2 is not going to do a whole lot right now by itself. I want to put up some more point defenses here. Which you can actually probably do right now. Just to help defend. Okay, so I got the first wave up, so I'm gonna patrol them like this so that they help so that they help keep at least some of this air stuff out of our area. See, but then they're gonna get they're gonna get taken down by the air superiority air superiority fighters. But they're tier two, so they should do okay. And then they come down here to refuel and rearm. Refuel, rearm, and even repair. As I, like I said, this this mission is going to take a while, so hopefully we can get this taken out. And hopefully make it a, a fairly decent timed video anyway. Hopefully. Yeah. See, so, yeah, they, they may be teach who they're fighter bombers, but they definitely will help at least alleviate some of these air attacks.
soon as I can get a bunch of these shield generators up, it'll be really nice as well. Okay. Come repair that. Take that mass. Okay, so now we got some more. Another set of four. That should definitely help. Yeah, so you take some more to upgrade to tier three. Once we get a bunch of T3 engineers, that'll definitely make a huge difference. We start to rebuild this, as you can already see, pre-built. Like I said, building on a foundation that has that previous structure is definitely a huge benefit. And it should definitely help alleviate at least some of these air attacks anyway. See, it's, that's a spy plane. That's a tier 3 spy plane, so I don't really have enough things to take that out right away, but I mean, some stuff might actually take it out. Hey, look at that. Tier 3, finally. We'll build one of each of those engineers. Bring them all down here. Because I think I can upgrade him to... Yeah, Tier 2. Is that going to take enough, though? I don't know. Let's see here. I think, as you guys can see here, just kind of the basics. So I think we'll pick this up maybe next time in our next video. And then maybe we'll clean up that up. So, as of right now, I'm going to hit pause. Oh, yeah, so you can hit the pause button and then you can also select things. So, right now we're going to end this video here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video.